On this exciting installment of the show, we get to determine which run-of-the-mill superhero wins the day. It's Marvel's worst versus DC's best on Movie Feuds. Let the hate commence. I don't really think Captain America is the worst Marvel movie, I just like to ruffle some feathers. That slot's dedicated for the Incredible Hulk. All the same, I don't really care for this first Captain America outing, but it's not because of the characters. Most of the cast is good, very passable to say the least. Chris Evans takes lead here as Steve Rogers, aka Captain America. He's a perfectly fine chap with sympathetic traits, but probably the least interesting guy in the MCU although later films have done a nice job giving him more depth. Gal Gadot was criticized by many when she was cast in the role of Wonder Woman. I was amongst that audience, and BBS did absolutely nothing to convince me otherwise. I was gladly proven wrong, as she was by far the strongest part of the first standalone flick. She perfectly embodies the fish-out-of-water Amazonian with strength and beauty. My gods, she's a strike to behold. And the camera doesn't shy away from that fact. No, 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 no. It perfectly zooms in on her. Frames are up real nice. Both flicks have central love stories that have heavy conclusions. I think the relationship between Chris Pine's Steve Trevor and Diana is the stronger one when compared to that of Carter and Rogers. We get multiple scenes dedicated to these two, and that chemistry pays off in the third act. Since both flicks take place during World Wars, there are plenty of military men throughout, and Bucky's is the only one that registers for me. The Wonder Woman support staff are very one-dimensional and have almost nothing to do. Did that shitty sniper even get redemption at the end? I don't think he took a single shot, and if he did, I completely forgot. That rhymed. And I think Captain America gets the better villain, too, with Red Skull, played by Hugo I Hate This Franchise Weaving. The MCU doesn't have a great track record for villains, but this crazy Nazi dude was pretty memorable. The same can't be said for Dr. Poison and the other big baddie of Wonder Woman. The main villain's a secret, so I'm not going to touch on that yet. This movie's still very fresh in theaters at the time of this recording. Let's just say I expected more from a person of that stature. Lastly, I want to give props to Tommy Lee Jones for not phoning his role in as Colonel Chester Phillips but he's nowhere near as badass as Robin Wright's Antiope. Stupid name, awesome character. It's story time, kids. Captain America's pretty straightforward story we've heard time and time again. Boy wants to fight in a war. Boy is too scrawny to fight in said war. Boy gets radical experiment done and transforms into a perfect specimen of a man. Man becomes a symbol of hope and freedom, rallies troops together to battle Nazi scum, and eventually a bizarre militarized organization simply known as Hydra, led by a man with a red face who recently harnessed the power of the Tesseract, also called the Cube, a crystalline cube-shaped containment vessel for an infinity stone, one of six singularities that predate the universe and possess unlimited energy. Pretty run-of-the-mill straightforward stuff. Wonder Woman is another one of those generic tales about a princess, born from clay, shaped by the god of the sky, Zeus himself, as a final weapon in case the stupid men stumbled upon that last safe haven of women. It is here that Diana will grow up and train as a fierce warrior and brandish her sword and lasso of truth to one day free men from the corrupt minds. Or will she? Perhaps evil isn't just a seed planted, but one that already grows in the ass of many. As unique and often weird as these stories get, they still feel so generic and almost boring at times. You would think things would go crazy, much like my Saturday Night Clay sculpting classes, but they don't. Where Wonder Woman really steps up is the cool island full of great action. Captain America becomes very generic and uninteresting once Steve makes his transformation. And I wasn't a fan of the entire presentation director Joe Johnson was going for. Treating the film like one big old-timey propaganda piece, complete with a montage of Cap and crew taking down the Hydra bases. To its credit, I can at least see what's happening most of the time, which brings us to our final round. Zack Snyder may not have directed Wonder Woman, but his vision is still very much on display. Dark and gritty doesn't have to be taken literally. Putting a 70% black opacity mask over the movie is not the same as making a serious one. Unfortunately, director Patty Jenkins sticks to the Snyder color theory playbook this time around. Once our heroine leaves the island, she only brings with her her wits, her weapons, and many shades of gray. What this movie lacks in interesting set pieces, it makes up for tenfold in action. We see this Trinity member take out a series of armed soldiers with ease in glorious slow motion, which honestly didn't bother me in the slightest. I will take that over the excessive shaky cam we see in most modern movies today. Captain America pales in comparison in this department. I can't remember a single exciting fight in that film and I just rewatched it a day ago. It was fun watching Diana slowly build up her power meter as the movie progresses, like she's leveling up for the final boss. What the 
the film absolutely fails on delivering, though, is the reaction of these soldiers as they watch Wonder Woman do these things. I can't remember a single time when she's picking up a tank or punching a guy through a window, does one of the soldiers look up and be like, what the fuck just happened here? How is she doing this? Where is she from? Who is this person? Why is she dressed so ridiculous? Why is she so ridiculously hot? Instead, they continue on with their little missions like she's just putting on a magic show in the corner. In that sense, Captain reigns supreme. Steve Rogers inspires and rallies troops everywhere he goes, and it's a clear message from beginning until end. I'm not entirely sure what the message of Wonder Woman was at the end. Did we Huey Lewis this thing? Was it the power of love? Finally, there is the music, which pretty much comes down to preference, as do most things in the movies. I was not a fan of the completely jarring Wonder Woman theme song in BVS. Much like her, it felt extremely out of place in that film. It had the opposite effect in her feature length, though. I loved everything I heard, and it was great that the score was not drowned out in the background. Captain America's theme and all-around score work well in the context of the film, I just don't like that style. So the music falls flat in that department for me too. Let's close this up. Wonder Woman's a perfectly fine film that could have been better, could have been a hell of a lot worse judging from the recent track record. And as previously stated, I enjoyed it more than Captain America, the first Snore Avenger. <laughs> the jokes aren't great on this episode, I apologize, that's on me. Let's hear from you though. Vote for your favorite of these two comic book movies, put down a comment about how inaccurate I am about everything, and remember this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. And I'm wearing a Superman shirt. Nothing screams credibility more than a guy wearing a $10 shirt from Target. Keep that in mind when you comment. I know what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to check me out on social media platforms for credibility purposes. Intern Sheila should be putting up some graphics for you to digest, I believe. Otherwise, you'll be out on the curb like your mom. Gotta move on. You can also check me out on patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Throw me a buck or two if you want. I run this channel alone. It's, a, it's almost a full-time job, honestly. Thanks for your time. Sheila, the graphics, now.